greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, we are going to share the word of God together just to encourage one another to receive from the throne of our mighty Father. Let us pray before we share the word of God together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you for this opportunity to receive from your throne. We thank you, my Father, for teaching us all the ways of the truth so that even in these last days we may live a life that reflects your kingdom. Almighty Father, indeed you have entrusted the kingdom unto us, and even when we are on this earth, we are not of this world. But Father, we thank you, we bless you, that as we take your word and embrace it, we embrace your power, and indeed we declare your kingdom here on the earth. Continue to teach us and guide us, continue to reveal the truth to us. Father, I thank you that you have anointed me to preach your word. You have anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted. You have anointed me to set at liberty them that are bound and to proclaim your favor upon your people. May your word go forth in power and in simplicity even this day. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you today with something that's one of the key principles in the kingdom of God. It is the principle of using words. Maybe I'll just start as an introduction to ask some of you, who of you have been hurt through words? The words that were spoken and you felt that you are hurt, you can't even forget those words. But also, who of you have been healed through words? Maybe you were at the brink of giving up. You were at the brink of saying, I want to quit. But somebody gave you words, spoke to you, and then you were encouraged once again and you stood up again. So you can see just from those two examples that words are powerful. So we've got to be very careful what we speak. Because words can kill, words can give life. Words can encourage, words can discourage. Words can minister grace to the hearers, but words can also hurt. So that's why I just want us to establish today this principle of words. So I'm going to share with you today about the power of words. Not only the words that we speak over others, but also words that we speak about ourselves. Because some of you today are snared because of your words. And you wonder why things are not changing in your life. Because your words are the ones that are digging a pit for you. So I want us to go even to the beginning and see how God created the heavens and the earth. Because our Heavenly Father established this principle when he created the heavens and the earth, when he created everything that we see today, he used words. So I want us to go together to the book of Genesis chapter 1. We're going to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, we are going to do it in uh, the Amplified Version. We are going to read from verse 1 to verse 5 so that you understand that words are powerful. In the Amplified Version, Genesis chapter 1, from 1 to 5. It says, in the beginning... God prepared, formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and an empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the very deep. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, suitable, pleasant, and he approved it. And God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was an evening, there was a morning, one day. So if you look here, you can see that in the beginning when it was dark, God did not speak darkness. God spoke light. So in your life, whatever is going on around you, do you speak what you see or do you speak what you want to see? God wanted to see light, so when it was dark, he did not speak darkness. He spoke light. He said, light be. So that's why I'm saying this is a principle. It's an established principle 
of creation that God has established from the beginning. He said, let there be light, and there was light. So that's why I'm asking you, in your life, what do you speak? So you've got to be very careful about the words that you speak. One of the things that I want us also to look closely at here, I like this in, this, in the Amplified, because it says in verse 2, the Spirit of God was moving or hovering or brooding over the face of the waters. So let's start looking at that principle of brooding over the face of the waters. I grew up in rural areas. We used to, 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 to breed and farm with chicken. So after the hen has laid the egg, the hen would lay several eggs and then after that brood over the eggs. So before the eggs are brooded upon, if you break that egg, you found a mixture of things. But if you allow that egg to be brooded upon, 21 days later, you will see that there is something coming up. You will start hearing a sound, chew, 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 because there was a brooding. So in this case, the Spirit of the Lord was brooding, hovering over the face of the waters. And when God spoke, things came into being. So you can see how God the Father and God the Word, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit cooperated in the creation because as the Spirit of God was hovering, God the Father spoke and he used the Word. Jesus is the Word. So I just want to encourage you to say also in your life, know that your words are powerful. Words have power. Words can create. But words can also destroy. So I want us to go together to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 20 and 21. We'll do it in the Amplified Version. It says, A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth, and with the consequence of his words he must be satisfied, whether good or evil. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it, for death or life. So if death and life are in the power of the tongue, it says you must be satisfied with the consequences of your words. So what you speak, check after you have spoken, what results are you getting? Actually, I like even how God did it. When God spoke words and then he saw the results of his word, he would check and see if it is good. So if you go back to where we read in Genesis, it says, I'll read it for you in verse 4. It says, and God saw the light, he saw that the light was good, and he approved it. In other words, check what you've been speaking into being and see whether you approve that. So I can see God here. He says something, he sees it coming to pass, and he says, let me see. And he say it is good. So in your life, are you able to do that stock take and say, I want to see the fruit of my words. The things that I've been speaking, whether it's about my own life or speaking this about other people, whether the words that I was speaking were giving life, were the words that I was speaking ministering grace to the hearers, are the words that I'm speaking also paving my good future? Because God has already determined that he's got good thoughts for you to give you a good future. So what do you say? Because if death and life are in the power of the tongue, you may kill yourself with those words. You may also kill others with your words. So we've got to be careful that the words that we speak should bring life, should minister grace to the hearer. Sometimes even between husbands and wives, the way you speak with one another. The way as parents we speak with our children, let's check, are the words that I'm speaking bringing life? Are they ministering grace or are they destroying? But also even in terms of creation, are my words creating the future that I desire? Are my words speaking what I want to see? Because today you will hear people talking a lot of negative things. There is a lot of hopelessness on the earth today. But if you take the word of God, if you always go strictly to the word of God and soak yourself in the word, soak yourself in the word, that word will come out of you. 
Because then what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that which you are feeding your heart with day and night, if you meditate on the word of God day and night, then you will observe to do according to all that is written in the word. And then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. So your success and your prosperity depends on what you are storing in your heart and what you are speaking. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What God did in the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth. Jesus came on earth. He came, taught us faith, but he also modeled faith. So he did not only teach us to use faith when he himself was not using faith. We've got many people today who can tell you everything that you should do. They teach you, they advise you, but they themselves cannot use that very same word that they are teaching. Like They are like the Pharisees. But I thank God that Jesus came, he taught us faith, but he also lived faith. I want to go with you to the book of Mark chapter 11. When God, when Jesus came across the fig tree, when he expected some fruits and he did not find any fruit there. I want us to read it together, Mark 11, verse 12 to 14 in the King James Version. It reads, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereof. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples had it. So if you look here, Jesus comes across this fig tree and then he realizes he does not have the figs. So he speaks words to see the desired outcome. He says, No one eat fruit of you hereafter forever. He didn't even have to chop that tree. He knew that the words, his words were powerful. His words had power to make that tree not bear fruit again. He did not even bother how will it happen. He just spoke the words and spoke the desired outcome and he knew that it's done. So the Bible says even his disciples heard him. Some of you, you are afraid to speak the word of God. You are afraid to speak what you desire because in your heart or in your mind you say, what if I say it and nothing happens? That is fear. That's not faith. You need to be bold and speak what God has said knowing that God is backing you up. If you speak anything in line with what God has said, it will happen. Speak that. Because look at this. Jesus, this next day, when they were coming back, because I like how Jesus did it. After speaking the words, he continued moving on. He did not wait and hang around to see if his words were working. Some of you, you pray or you are prayed for. You speak a word, but you start checking, is it working? Is it working? If you are confident of the words that you speak, and you know that you are speaking inspired by God, speak and move on in life, and things will be happening behind the scene. So when Jesus, when they went away, Look at this, verse 20 to 23, King James Version. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance says unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. I like this. It says, when they came back and they saw that the fig tree was dried up from the roots, Peter now calls into remembrance and says, Master, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. So it means Peter was actually checking. I want to see if what the master has said will take place. The master knew that it was done already. So when Peter said, Behold the fig tree which you cursed, these are the words that I'm, I also want to look at. He said the fig tree which you cursed. But Jesus did not say, I'm cursing you fig tree. He just spoke words and says, No one will eat fruit from you here after forever. And that was a curse on that tree because it will never bear fruit again. So some of you are speaking words in your life that are bringing a curse upon your life. Don't do that. Check your words before you speak. But also, just like Jesus, there may be circumstances that are facing you which need to be given words that are a curse. 
so that they can win. I'll give you an example. If cancer, cell, if cancer cells want to be in my body, I say, be thou removed. Cancer cells are not allowed to live in my body. And I say, disease germs, you are not allowed to live and multiply in my body. That word will make disease germs to die. So it is a curse against that disease germ. So that's why when Jesus spoke, and he spoke things into being, what he wanted to see, he would speak it and want to see it. What he didn't want to see, he would prohibit it. That is the same authority that God gave us. He says, well, I give you the keys of the kingdom so that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But one interesting thing here in the book of Mark, after Peter called, to rem called Jesus to remembrance about the fig tree, and he says, the master, the fig tree which you cast has withered away, Jesus did not take the credit and start saying, I told you that I'm a man of God. To him, it was already done. So he says, have faith in God. In other words, if you have faith in God, you can do the same thing. That's why he says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say will come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. So I'm telling you, child of God, I'm telling you, you shall have whatsoever you say. If you speak it, believing it in your heart, you shall have whatever you say. So believe it, and it will happen. Keep on believing it, it will happen. Because if the Lord has said it, he is watching over his word to fulfill it in your life. You are not the one that should try and make the word of God work. That is where most of us are caught. Instead of just speaking the word, instead of just speaking what God has said, we are trying to ask ourselves how. I remember in the book of Deuteronomy where God said, when you see that the armies that are coming against you, there are two new matters for you. Don't ask yourself how. Remember how I delivered you from Egypt. That's what you should do. You must not ask yourself how. That is the problem with most of us. Speak the desired outcome. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm saying to you, be encouraged, child of God, because the principle of speaking words, speaking what we believe, it's an established principle. God created the heavens and the earth using the word, and he keeps on speaking things into being. Jesus came on earth, he used the word. So even you, child of God, use the word, because that's where your victory is. I want us to go together to the book of Ezekiel, because in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, as you're getting there, I just want to tell you something. Look at how God is teaching us to use our faith. So I always equate faith as a tool in the hand of a mechanic. Imagine you want to take out a car tire and you do not have the right wheel spanner. You will struggle. You can do everything you want, try to use the hand, try to use whatever. If you do not have the correct spanner, you will not be able to take that wheel out. And you will say it's impossible. But just get the right span. You just put it in. You start turning. You start seeing things, how, things uh, how things become so simple. Because you are using the correct tool. So faith is our tool to unlock every impossible situation. Look at this. Ezekiel was faced with an impossible situation. God takes him and shows him things that look impossible. So let's go together to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, from verse 1, in the King James Version. It says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he says to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you, and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. 
and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on this slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Is that what not some of you are feeling like? I'm in a hopeless situation, my hope is gone. You feel like this dry bone situation. So when things are like that, he says, son of man, prophesy to the bones. Speak to them. Speak to your situation. Some of you are very good at complaining and telling all everybody that things are falling apart. You're not speaking to your dry bones. You need to prophesy. He says, when you prophesy to those bones, when he was telling Ezekiel, he said, tell the dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So whatever the situation that you are facing, tell it. Hear the word of God. Hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord says, I'm healed. My body, listen. The word of God says, I'm healed by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I believe I'm healed by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you have a need, you say the word of God says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He indeed provides, he meets all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So in other words, you speak what God has already said. When things are coming against you and you feel scared, you say, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. When there are things that you are afraid of and it's like people are plotting against you, you think of what uh, Isaiah 54 says, starting from 15, going down. He says, they will surely come together against you, but it will not be because of the Lord. And no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Any tongue that raise up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. So start speaking what God has said. Don't speak what people are saying about you. Some of you, you are always listening at what people are telling you. They tell you words that break you down. They tell you you will never be anybody. They tell you you are ugly. You're not going to succeed. And you believe that. No. Go to the word of God and see what God says. And speak for yourself what God has said. Because in the book of Mark, where we read, it says you shall have whatsoever you say. So it doesn't matter what they say, I will, put, I, will, I will be a master of my own destiny. So I will have what I say. So child of God, as we close, I want us to look at the book of Romans chapter 4. And just look at the example of Abraham, who also believed God and then things happened. He believed according to what was written. So let's go together to Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 21 in the King James Version. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom we believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. So, child of God, be fully persuaded that every promise that God has given, he is able to fulfill it. So, Abraham believed according to that which was written, according to that which was spoken, so you also need to believe according to that which is written, according to that which has been spoken. And you also speak it in your life as you believe. The Bible says we have the same spirit of faith. We believe and therefore we speak. You also have the same spirit of faith. Believe and speak what you believe. Don't speak what you see. Speak into being what you want to see. Because here the Bible says, Abraham believed in God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. He did not call things that were as though they were. Some of you are doing that. You call things that are as though they are. That doesn't change anything. You need to call what you want to see come to pass. Your words are powerful. 
In the name of Jesus, we're going to conclude it here. I believe you are stayed up. I believe you are going to use your words to change your situations, to say I'm a master of my own destiny. The words that have been spoken about me, I nullify them because I want to speak words for my own future. Because the word of God says, I shall have whatsoever I say. In Jesus' name. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you. We bless you even for your word. Thank you, Father, for simplifying your word and giving us this word in such a powerful way. I thank you, Lord, that indeed everyone who has heard this word, mighty Father, may the Spirit, may your Spirit, O Lord, make this word real and alive in them. That, Father, as they embrace your word, they embrace your power. And as they speak, may that word indeed come to pass as they speak in line with your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. For every one of them who is sick, who is not feeling well right now, I send word of healing. I say be healed in the name of Jesus. I command every sickness and every pain to stop right now in the name of Jesus. I dispel every confusion in your life. I say it is well with you. It is well with you. It is well with you. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10, it says, say to the righteous, tell them, it shall be well with them. So I'm telling children of God, I say it shall be well with them. I'm declaring this as the servant of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you again next time. Stay blessed. Continue to use the word. And continue to take the word of God and speak that word in your situations because the word is powerful in Jesus' name.